Let's make a frequency histogram, um, which we're talking about right here. Uh, we First thing I want you to do is go into my math lab to course materials, then data, then frequency histogram exploration spreadsheet. And that's going to give you the data that we're going to do this example with. So let me show you that real quick here. We're at the home page for Math 106. Um, I want to point out real quick, these announcements are from me, so be sure that you read them and look there every time you come in and see if there's anything new I needed to tell everybody. Um, then you'll go to Course Materials, and then to Data, and then I have here on my view, I have a, a Frequency Histogram Instructor Data. That's the one I'm going to show you as a class and then the one I want you to use to make your own is this Frequency Histogram Student Data Google Sheets. So you'll come here and click this one. I'm going to click this one. It'll work the same way. I just want to show you how this all goes together. Um, next thing I want to do is make a copy of this file, but I do want to have my own copy so I don't mess up what everybody else gets to see. Um, now when you are in this is a Google Sheet, and it's very much like Excel, but it does histograms oh so much faster, so we're going to use it for histograms. So the first thing is you can find the minimum, the maximum, the range, the same way as you can in Excel. You just type in the cell itself, type equals, and then start typing min, and you can see min, and it's telling me here, let's see if I can show, it's telling me here all about the, the formula that I'm typing in. It says min, and you can give it a bunch of numbers, returns the minimum value in a list of arguments, and those are the, the value or the range, and we're going to give it a range. And then, so it's kind of giving you the overview of what the function looks like. So we know we need to put parentheses, and then I need to tell it what numbers I want the minimum value for. So to do that, I'll click on that first cell, and you can see it's turned it green. I'm going to push down Control shift and then down arrow, and that's going to select my entire range of data, and I can scroll down a little further, and I can see it went all the way to the bottom of my data. That's awesome. And then I'll just put in the right parenthesis and push enter, and there it's giving me the value of 5 as being the smallest value in this list of values. Now I want to find the largest value, so again equals to tell it the um, Google Sheets that I want it to calculate something, and then max, so I'm starting to type maximum, and you can see over here it says max um, gives you the maximum value in a list of arguments. That's perfect, that's what we want. So leave it on max, left parentheses. Again, I need to select all that data, so click on the first one, push down Control Shift, and then the down arrow that's going to give me the entire range of values right parenthesis and push enter. And then I can scroll up and see that it told me my largest value is a 66. Now I want to find the range. So when I know the largest and the smallest, I can just subtract the two. If I want Excel to do it for me, then I, I have to tell it equals because I want it to do some calculating. And then I can just click right on the maximum and then put minus for subtract and then click right on the minimum. And so it says it's going to take the value that's in the cell D3, so that's D and 3, which is our maximum, and subtract the one that's in D2, which is the one right above, that's our minimum. So when we have that set up, then we just push enter, and there it came up with 61 for us. So very easy to do the minimum, the maximum, and then find the range based on the minimum and the maximum. Now I do want to create a histogram for this data, so I'll try by selecting the data first, control shift down arrow, so I remember you go to the first cell in your list, control shift down arrow to select all your data, and then I'll go to insert, so insert, chart, and on the chart it's giving me some recommended charts and it already has the data that I selected in here for data select ranges. So I have that already set up. I can just click on this histogram because I've done it recently, but if yours isn't showing that, I'll show you how to get to it. You just click here on charts and it is a column chart and it is the third one. And if you hover over it, it will say histogram. So we'll click on it there. 
select the chart we want, and then go to customize. And now it's going to let me put in a title for my chart. Now we kind of zipped right through this and so not maybe not really sure what the title should be. So I'm just going to put, I don't know, frequency. And that's a really bad title. So I am going to come back and fix it in a little bit. But I just wanted to type that on there and then I'll say insert. Now if I scroll up, it should show my, my badly titled frequency histogram. And now I can look and see what my data actually was. And that was why I couldn't come up with a good title. I couldn't remember what my data was. So I'm looking at it, it says number of phone calls handled per day by a call center employee. So on uh, the first day that they kept track, the employee handled five calls. The next day it was 15, the next day 33, the next day 25, and so on. And so on my chart here, I'm seeing a bin from zero to eight, and it has one, two, three, four days that had zero to eight calls. So that's what this is telling me. This is down across the bottom is the number of calls. And then on the top, this is how many days had that number of calls. And so my whole chart, if I get to the, I can see, I just click on it and it lets me fix it. So I click on that and it puts it up. It says frequency histogram. I want to change it to number of phone calls per day. So number of phone calls per day. And I think that's a better title and it does say press enter to apply. So I'll just push enter and it fixed it right up for me. I do want to fix the horizontal axis title. So again, just click on it and you can type. You don't have to push back arrow or anything to delete the part that's been highlighted. You just start typing and it'll replace it. So across the bottom, that was the number of phone calls. <laughs> the number of phone calls handled in that particular day. So I pushed enter, there it is, number of phone calls, and then click on the other axis, the vertical axis, and it says left vertical axis title, and that would be the number of days that had that many phone calls. So how many days? So number of days. So we would title that one number of days. So across the bottom is how many phone calls were handled and then how many days had that number of phone calls. Now you can come over here where the legend is and you can delete that clear by doing right click on it and clear legend. That cleans it up just a little bit and then we have number of phone calls and we may want to change this just a little bit. So I'm going to come up here and put in the word handled per day and push enter and there it is updated. Um, at this point my histogram looks beautiful. It's showing me it made the bins for me and it's decided between 0 and 8 will be listed here, between 8 and 16 here, 16 to 24 in this bar and it's showing me how tall each of the bars is, how many, how many days had that number of calls. So once I have that then I can come up to the top I'll click on this little down arrow here and I can copy chart and it'll copy it to my clipboard and then I can go in over here on the where it shows the sheet I can go there it says open Google Drive and I want to create a new file and so I'll click on the create and come down I want to make a document because I want to create something with my histogram to send to Mrs. Brown or my teacher so click document and then I'm just going to paste it so I did control V that will paste it and there it is pasted in my in my file so yours should be all by itself should tell the whole story about the data that is in your file which will not look exactly like mine but it'll have the number it'll have a nice title like mine has number of phone calls handled per day and then the number of phone calls across the bottom and the number of days across the side and that will be sufficient. Now if you want you can change the name on your document just by clicking on the name and so you'll type the name for your document and I might call this one frequency homework and then OK. Now if I'm doing a good job with this I really should move I'm kind of 
click somewhere and then use your arrow keys to move to this to the front of your graphic and then I'm pushing enter a couple of times come up to the top and then I can type in my name and my class and so forth whatever your teacher would like you to put and then you have this ready to send off so then I can it automatically saves in um, Google Documents so all I have to do now is say email as attachment and email as attachment is perfect it's already logged in at, to my Gmail account so that's where it's going to send it from so I just say email as attachment and it'll attach it as an HTML I can also send it as a PDF that's a really good idea and then put where I want it to go to and I see my email so I'm going to send it there because I'll show it to you here in a minute it gives the same title as whatever the title for your file and say this is my histogram and then put your name again and you can have it send a copy to you which is a fantastic idea in case there's any problem with the email that you typed in you won't have to redo the the project and then click send there it is so I'll just click on that so we can see it and it says click here to download pictures so your teacher will be able to do that but it says attached frequency home homework this is my histogram Joan Brown so now I can open it and um, and see what what you did and there I can see your histogram perfect just how you sent it to me so here's a brief recap of the instructions so you will need to have a Gmail address and Google Drive loaded onto your computer whatever computer you're going to use to do Google uh, sheets from our goal is to create a histogram for the data and insert it to an, a Word document and then email it to your instructor. The Google Sheets notes. How do you insert a histogram? Select the data first, use Control Shift down arrow, and then click Insert, then Bar Chart, then Histogram. And then to change the title, you can change it in the starting menu or you can change it by clicking on the title itself. And the same for the axis labels and then to copy and paste into a Word document on the top right of the histogram itself is a little drop down menu and you can click on that and select copy and then go to the Google Docs on the top left of your sheets window and it's blue and then open Google Drive and then click the red create doc button and then you can paste your document in by using control V Okay. So you change the file name by actually just click on it and type what you want the file name to be and then go to file and then email as attachment and fill in the email address and so forth to send it to your instructor and you can also check the box to have it send a copy to you.